Good morning again and um, I know it's Thursday and that I said I would speak to you on Wednesday but as I said to you in my last thought for the day I don't really know what day it is. Thank you for Tom for reminding me and I want to continue today with another story about God speaking to me and uh, it also connects to to um, Tom's thoughts yesterday about the weaving of our story uh, into God's story. Um, and it's a, it's a continuation really of what I was saying last time, as it always is, because as Tom was saying, it weaves and it weaves and it weaves. And about nine years after the events of my last story, I, uh, I hit a brick wall and uh, Unbeknown to me, I'd become addicted to the drug that had been prescribed for me at the time of my breakdown. And uh, that drug was uh, lorazepam, which is also known as Ativan. Um, and uh, I decided to uh, withdraw from it. Uh, uh, there'd been no proper oversight of my medication. I think this applied for so many people. Um, and something that I now know now, I should have only been taken for a short period, uh, maybe three or four weeks. And uh, this was nine years later. And the physical manifestations of um, withdrawal were seizures, where I became completely paralyzed, and uh, severe abdominal problems. And I was rushed to hospital on at least two occasions. But worse was the psychological pain of the severe anxiety that uh, the withdrawal created. I won't go into all the detail, save that I was told that it was more difficult to come off this drug than heroin. Uh, I eventually, it took me about uh, 18 months uh, to actually finally come off it. And that, that was a real um, victory for me. And um, But it was during this time that I was attending Holy Trinity Church in Heath Town. My good friend Alistair Palmer was the uh, the vicar there at the time. And one Sunday there was a visiting preacher from Africa and he was called Joe Hanna, who's a friend of, of uh, Alistair's. And um, during the night before uh, the Sunday, I'd woken up about 4 a.m. and said to Mavoreen that I couldn't take any more, that I, that I couldn't go on. And uh, when morning came, I said I, I couldn't face going to church, but Mavoreen encouraged me and said, that there might be something for me there. And I reluctantly went with her. And when Johanna got up to preach, he said, before I begin my sermon, I want to say this because I believe that it's for someone here this morning. And Johanna said that he'd woken at 4 a.m., the time that I'd woken, and that someone had come into his mind who was saying that they couldn't take it anymore, that they couldn't go on. And that he said, if that person was here, would they come and speak to him after the service? And of course, I knew it was me. I went all hot, <laughs> panicky. And I, but I really had to be encouraged to go to speak to him. I, I wasn't going to go to speak to him, such was the state of my mind at the time. And he was very comforting, but he told me this. God is saying to you, Terry, get out of the boat and get into the water. Now I'm going to fast forward maybe 12 years or so and uh, I went on an individual retreat to Lindisfarne or Holy Island as it's also known. It's one of my favourite places in the whole world and I stayed at a Christian retreat house called The Open Gate and I met each morning with my retreat guide Ray Simpson who's the author of many books on Celtic Christianity and uh, he gave me a little booklet that he'd written to help me go around the island and pray at different points and then reflect. And uh, I set out on the first morning around, around the island and went to the first point, which was on a ridge called the Hue. It's uh, the next highest point on the island. And uh, I started to say the prayer. But halfway through, you know that horrible voice of doubt that comes in and it started to I started to listen to it it said who do you think you are who do you think you are this is all nonsense anyway you're just posing 
and momentarily I listened to that voice and I began to walk away disheartened but something changed my mind and I thought I may be thinking this but I'm going to persevere anyway and I began the prayer again suddenly three white geese three wild geese came flying over me and they were so low that I if I'd have put my hand up I would have been able to touch them now you might know that the wild goose is a symbol of the Holy Spirit in Celtic Christianity and I this filled me with joy and I felt this was God speaking to me offering reassurance that he was with me and it was just an incredible feeling you know those feelings that you get sometimes and the next point of prayer was on St Cuthbert's Island which is a tiny island about a hundred yards off the main island and you can walk across to it when the tide's out and it's where Cuthbert used to go um, to rest to get away from the demands of the crowds who came to see him to reflect and um, refresh himself so I went across over the ridge of the island and there's a, there's a cross, a little cross on the island and, and beyond that there's a little hollow. And uh, so I went into this little hollow and, and said the required prayer in the book. And then, uh, you know, <laughs> and this, this might apply to you, I don't know, but it applies to me certainly. I wasn't satisfied with the geese. That joy had gone, <laughs> that joy had just gone away from me. And I wanted God to show me another sign. I wanted to know what he wanted me to do with my life. So I asked him, give me a sign, Lord. What do you want me to do with my life? As if, as if I hadn't, he never said anything to me. As if I'd, he'd never really told me, as if. And I waited for an answer, but nothing. Waited a little bit more nothing oh well I thought I was expecting too much he, he wasn't uh, gonna answer me and uh, I felt a bit disgruntled with him if I'm honest so I got up to make my way back onto the Lindisfarne Island and I got over uh, the ridge and to my horror the tide had come in and the tide rushes in fast and I normally would have checked the tide times but for some reason that day I hadn't. I stood looking at the sea as it rushed in and it was getting higher by the minute. It was November and it was really cold and I had to make a choice. I had to do I stay on St Cuthbert's Island until the tide goes out which was about nine, year, nine, nine years nine hours later would have felt like nine years or do I get into the water and bearing in mind I can't really swim it it wasn't an easy choice anyway rather than freeze to death for nine hours um, I decided I'd get in the water and it came up to my chest and I was afraid that I would slip on the rocks and the algae and the sw and the seaweed that littered the the seabed but I managed to get to the other side and the only thing I was concerned about it there was some people stood uh, uh, on that side uh, watching me and they must have thought I was mad but I pretended I was doing something else that this was something that I did you know all the time I was doing some research or something so I started to look this way and that way and shake my head the sort of thing you do when you're running for a bus and it pulls away and you carry on running that sort of um, response but it struck me well first of all it struck me that God has a sense of humor but it struck me about what Johanna had said to me those years before God wanted me to get in the water and here was my answer and after all that time, I finally responded. I did get into the water. Literally, I got into the water. But it meant more than that. It meant more than that, that literal 
Dini. And I'm thankful that I got into the water. And I went back to the retreat house and was met by a nun who was working there. And she said, take your clothes off. Which I thought was a bit forward, especially given she was a nun. Anyway, she meant go and take your clothes off in your room, change your clothes, come down, which I did. And she did me a toasted tea cake and a nice hot cup of coffee, which was very comforting. You see, I'd re I realised, and, and um, that's what I do all the time, I think. Um, for a long time, I'd been saying to God, catch me if you can. Thinking, and I thought I was outrunning him. He wasn't keeping up with me. But of course, he's always one step ahead, isn't he? We can't outrun him. We can't outthink him. We can't outsmart him. And maybe you um, might ask yourself the same question. You might find yourself in a similar frame of mind, in a similar situation. Or ask yourself, am I clinging onto the boat when I need to get into the water? And me getting into the water led on to other things, other strands in the story. And there's more to the story, of course. Maybe I'll tell it next time. So stay safe and I pray the peace of God to you all. God bless. Bye-bye.